Good morning, church. Let us uh, begin this morning uh, before our sermon in prayer. So let's bow our heads. Dear Holy Father, Lord, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity this morning, Lord, that we may be able to wake up, be able to just be alive, God, and to come and to worship and learn more about your word, Father. You know, the small things in life, God, the small things, even the big things, it all, it's all not possible without you, Father. All the stuff we go through, all the stuff we do, Lord, it's, it will be insanely hard without you. But the thing is, uh, the beauty of you, Father, is that you show us, you give us comfort, you give us strength, you give us courage, you give us everything that we need as long as we're willing to follow you, Father. And so I pray, Father, for everybody in here, that everybody may follow you, Lord, full willingly to the best of their abilities so that they can glorify your name, Father. And also I just want to say thank you for everyone in here, Lord, to come, that came, Lord, this morning to worship you. That it's good to see brothers and sisters um, in fellowship with each other, encourage each other, Father. So, Lord, I pray that you uh, give me the words, give me the knowledge, and guide me as I present your, uh, your holy word, Father. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. So, this morning, we'll be talking about the servant of Christ. Now, you know, we should think about it. What is the servant of Christ? You know, we, we, we hear about it, we read about it, but do we truly understand the full picture of a servant? You know, when we think of a servant, you know, we think of somebody helping somebody. We think of somebody, you know, selflessly helping, but do we also think about a servant of Christ also not just helping, not just serving, but also sticking to the Word of God? Immersing ourselves in the Word. Today, today uh, this morning, we're going to go to First Timothy, chapter four. And before we start in First Timothy, chapter four, verse six, I want to present three points that Paul points out. What is a servant of Christ? But before we go into that, I want to explain. Before we, we go into First Timothy, I want to explain the background between Paul and Timothy. You see, in Timothy, Paul is talking to Timothy, a young man that is gifted, that he is going to be leading the church in Ephesus. Now, the problem is, is that not only that he's young, but in the church in Ephesus, there are problems. There are false teachers. There are people that that are swaying away. There's just so many problems that Timothy is going to face. What Paul does in this letter, he gives Timothy guidance. He gives him wisdom. He gives him strength. He gives him what he needs to be able to lead the church in Ephesus. So let us turn to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, I mean chapter 4, sorry, uh, and beginning in verse 6. It says... If you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of the faith and the good doctrine that you have followed. So here, P Paul is telling Timothy that everything I'm going to tell you, I want you to put these things in front of your brothers and sisters that you be able to show them that you are a man of God, that you are a servant of God. Following along in verse uh, 7, it says, Have nothing to do with... Um, Irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also the life to come. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. For to this we toil and strive because we have our hope set on the living God and who is the Savior of all people, especially of these who believe. So which brings me to point number one. 
The servant of Christ trains in godliness. Paul is telling Timothy to train in godliness. You know, he says when he trains in godliness, he trains in the word of God and in true doctrine. He looks to the word of God. He looks for what, what God truly is saying. Not only that, but in our life, there's many, many types of training. You know, the example that Paul uses here is physical training. He says physical training can take us to an extent in life. But compared to godly training, godly training is superior to, to uh, physical training. Because when you exercise, yeah, you get your body up to be healthy. But what about your mind and your soul? You know, in godly training, godly training is not only for this life that we live today. You know, it helps us. It prepares us. We learn. We grow. We, we are wiser. But also, it helps us not only in this life, but the next. It helps us achieve our goal, which is heaven. But not just only heaven, but to also glorify God while we are here. So, what he says is that train yourself in godliness. Let godliness be your training. Let it be your focus in God. Because, like he said, training in godliness is training in the word of God and true doctrine. Immerse ourselves in that. And overall, if you think about it, godliness, you know, God, Jesus, God, he's our savior of all and a hope that will never fail us. You know, a hope that never fails, a training that would never fail us, a training that guarantees us what we need, what we truly need. And this is why in, in training in godliness, we work hard, we strive. We strive because God never fails us, because he gives us what we need and he knows what we need. And so we strive to be like Christ. And so the conclusion to my first point is through godly training, we can be in every way through Christ. Now let's continue on in uh, chapter 4 of 1 Timothy. Well, we're continuing in verse 11. It says, Command and teach these things. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I come to vo devote, devote yourselves to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortion, and to teaching. What Paul says to Timothy, he says, devote yourself to Christ in teaching and being an example. He says, being an example in speech. You know, if we're serving Christ, if we are followers of God, if we become a servant, when we are a servant of God, what comes out of our mouth? What do we say and what do we do? Well, first of all, we represent Christ. If we're, if we're trying to be like Christ, training to be like him, we represent him. So in our speech and what we say, we have to be careful of what we say. Because, I'm, I mean, for example, you know, I'm not going to go up to somebody and just, you know, I guess uh, start, you know, saying unkind words to them. I'm not going to go up to somebody and not encourage them. I'm not going to do what the opposite of what God teaches us. You know, in my speech, I will fully, I will fully glorify God in what I say. So that means I'll be careful of what I say. I'll be, whatever comes out of my mouth will be of what God teaches us, which is, comes to love one another. We love each other. We represent the love of Christ. And he also says in a, an exhortion, meaning life, our life. We've been an example in our lives. Not only that, but we live by faith in God. And we live in purity. When we, are, when we accept God into our lives, when we accept Christ, we follow Christ. We leave our old selves behind and we are baptized. And so in our new selves, we yearn, we strive for purity, just as Christ was. And if you look at all these, Christ, through his speech, he glorified God. Christ, through his life, he glorified God. Christ shared the love of God. He lived 
in faith to God, and he lived in purity. And so we are called to do the same as servants of God. And also Paul says, devote ourselves in Scripture. If we devote ourselves to Scripture, we may obtain wisdom from God. But not only that, but not only obtaining wisdom, but he also says he commands us to teach. And because if we devote ourselves to Scripture, we have the wisdom to teach. And through that, wherever we may go, we can teach what God were, we can teach God's word. And also that. Uh, Paul also tells Timothy because, like I said, Timothy was a gifted young man, and Paul knew that. He was very close to Timothy. He understood that. And each and every one, everybody in here, everybody, we all have a gift that God has blessed us. If we understand, if we follow God and walk with God, we can understand that gift that God has blessed us with. But not only that, we can utilize that gift in our wisdom and utilize it in our daily lives as we live through Christ. Not only that, but through our teachings. And through that, we can, we can glorify God. You know, a good example, uh, a, good, a really good example of this is the apostles. You know, the apostles, they, we understand that they lived with the Christ. They lived with Jesus for about three years. They taught, they learned with them. Christ was taught them face to face. And through that, learned wisdom. They learned what it means to be a follower of God. But they didn't understand fully in those three years because it takes time. It takes a lifetime to, figure, to, to mature in their faith in God. But not only that, because they understand that, they devote themselves. If you look later in their lives, they devoted themselves. They kept going, even though Christ died and resurrected, and now he's in heaven around us, everywhere, they still did not quit. They kept going. They devoted themselves to spread the gospel. And not only that, but since they understand the wisdom of God, since they devoted themselves fully, they accepted God into their lives, and they made the choice to follow God fully, wholeheartedly. They also accepted their gifts and wisdom and they glorify God in that. If you look at that, if you look at the apostles and just by accepting them, accepting God and accepting the wisdom, letting the wisdom flow not only through their minds, but God's word through their hearts, they are able to glorify God greatly. And that is a great example for us as followers of God, as servants of Christ. We can do the same because the apostles were just ordinary men. Nothing special. They had just allowed God to be their master. And so, my point too, servant is a teacher and an example of Christ. The conclusion to that, the conclusion to that is that we will, we will be living that God, Christ wants us to be living examples of him and teachers of, the, of God's word. So let us continue in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 14. It says, Do not neglect the gift you, oh, oh, do not ne uh, do not neglect the gift you have, uh, by the, oh, sorry, do not neglect the gift you have, which was given to you by prophecy when the council of elders lay their hands on you. Verse 15 says, practice these things, immerse yourself in them, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teachings. Persist in this, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. You know, Paul is explaining to Timothy right here in verse 16. It says, keep a close watch on yourself and on the teachings. Persist in this by doing so. He says, keep a close watch on yourself. You know, in our daily lives, 
we can, we, after this, after service, you know, right now we are, we are learning. We are not only that, but we are hearing the word of God. But, but the thing is, after this, we go back to our lives. We go back to everyday living. And let me ask you this. Do we watch ourselves closely? Do we understand our actions? Do we know what we're saying? Are we careful of what we're doing? Like I said earlier, uh, like I said earlier, you know, we, we are to train in godliness, meaning uh, we're trained in godliness in that through speech. You know, Paul tells Timothy is to watch yourself, evaluate yourself, and make sure that you are, that you are speaking true doctrine, which is the word of God. And so which brings me to point number three, the understanding and responsibility of the servant of Christ. Ultimately, we have our choice to follow God. Ultimately, we have a choice to follow God, to read his word, and to study his word. And if we accept that, we not only that, but we have a responsibility we have a responsibility to understand the word of God. You know, Mike was saying earlier, you know, what is, tr- Mike and Karen, Karen was saying that some people, there's a lot of, fa- some people teach false doctrine, which is true. But the thing is, is that it's up to us if we understand what God, what what the Bible really says. Because Karen says we have the Bible right in front of us. We do. But it's up to us if we're going to study it and know it and understand what tr- the true doctrine of what God's word is. Because if we don't, like he says in the, in the ending uh, of verse 16, he says, by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. If we don't understand what, what the true doctrine of the Bible is, and we teach it, we are not only responsible for our own salvation, we are responsible for the ones that hear it, because we are leading them astray from what true salvation is, which is right in the Bible, right here in front of us. But to do so, like I said before, we have to immerse ourselves in Scripture. We have to understand the Word of God. But by doing so, we have to read it. We have to immerse ourselves. We have to live it. We have to not only live it, but once we understand it, we teach it. And so the true doctrine is very important to know. Not only that, but it's also very important to live by so our knowledge of the truth is our responsibility. Once we made the choice of reading it, once we made the choice of Christ as our Savior, it's our responsibility to know the gospel, to know the truth, to teach the truth. But also that, he says, I like how he says right here in, in verse 15, he says, practice He says, practice these things. Immerse yourself in God's word. Practice. Immerse yourself. You know, when we think of, the best example I could think of is an athlete. You know, we watch these professionals play. We watch these uh, men play at the highest level of sports. How do they get to that? We all know they practice. That's a given. But what they do is they devote themselves. They immerse themselves in the sport, not only to action, but in knowledge. And through that practice, through that studying, through all that devotion, they are able to be the best of the best. But in Christ, we become the best we can be. We become the best that God knows 
our weaknesses. God knows our strengths. He knows everything about us. By that, we should allow God to teach us in the Word, practice His teachings, practice the Scripture, and through that, we become what God wants us to become, the best that we can be to glorify His name. A good example that comes to my mind is uh, Moses. When Moses was guiding the Israelites to the desert, he had a huge responsibility. I believe it was a half a million Israelites, half a million people he had to guide. That's a lot of people for one guy. But the thing is, is so there was problems along the way, many, many problems. And one problem was when Moses went up to the mountain to go talk to God, to be with God, when he came down, he found out that every, uh, the Israelites were worshiping a false idol and not worshiping God. Now, if Moses wasn't devoted to God, if Moses didn't understand God and, his te- and understand who God was, he would have fell into that worship with the other people, that false worship. But the, the thing is, he had wisdom. He knew what was better, which was worshiping God and not a false idol. Because a false idol is nothing. It says false idols as real as his remotes. But God is more powerful than anything in this universe. And through that, Moses understood. And because of that, he stopped them. He stopped the people that worshiped the idols, and they went back on track. Another good example, a more, I guess a more personal example, is Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel trusted God. He prayed to God because what happened was is that the, I believe it was the, the it was the king's men, I forgot what they were, but the king's men were jealous of Daniel. When they were jealous of Daniel, they, they tricked uh, Daniel because they, uh, the king passed a law that Daniel could pray to his God, to his idol. And what they, they caught Daniel praying to God. And because of that, they, the king took Daniel, threw him in the lion's den. And if we really look at this, there's two options. Daniel could have just died, or Daniel could have, which he did, trust in God. He had the wisdom and the knowledge, not only that, but he had the faith in God to trust in him. And because of that, God saved him. So, the understanding and acceptance of the responsibility of the servant of Christ is the conclusion to this, is that the servant overall is responsible for knowing True doctrine, which is God's word, which is what is real, what is true. Because if we're not prepared in life, we will be led astray by false teachers. Just as Timothy is, he's, he's up against false t- uh, teachings in the Ephesus church. But he has to be able to be wise. He has to be able to be knowledgeable of what is the real doctrine. And if you think about it, that's, if he doesn't know, then that's going to be super hard for him. So as servants of God, we should, we should understand what true doctrine in God's word. Which leads me to my ending. The servant of Christ trains in godliness. The servant of Christ lives and teaches the word of God. The servant of Christ is responsible for their knowledge of the truth. Trains in godliness. That's constant. That's something in our everyday lives. Just as Paul told Timothy, training in godliness what we need overall in this life, and for the next. Lives and teaches the word of God. 
for me, there's one thing that really got to me, for me from living and teaching the Word of God, was fear. We can be fear because if you th- what, res- what the third point says, responsible for their knowledge of truth. If we understand the Bible, if we understand God's Word, then there won't be no fear for living and teaching the Word of God. So, like I said before, we choose to follow God. We choose to read. We choose to have faith. And if we choose, not only as a, but as a servant of Christ, we train in godliness, we live and teach the word of God, and we're responsible for our knowledge in the truth. Because ultimately, If we call ourselves a servant of God, we will live in a godly life. We will live and teach the word, and we will immerse ourselves in the word of God. If you have any prayers, if you have any concerns, if you feel like you're not good enough, if you feel like you're falling short, The power of prayer is strong. It's real. If you have any prayer requests, if you want to come up and pray, please come up. And I'll be gladly praying for you. Thank you.